Hey, welcome to Grow. Welcome to Grow. I'm Coach Anthony Thompson. I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. I've been thinking about this today and just thinking about what Grow is. Like, why, why Grow? What's important about it? Why does it matter? How does it apply to you? Right? And so, if you're coming on and you're trying to figure out what Grow is, it, it, starts, it starts simple. Then I'll break down each one. That's, I want to break down each layer of how we're going to grow. First is G. It's God. It's God. It's about spirituality. It's about where you're at. It's about, and the scriptures talks about even how Jesus grew, that he grew in wisdom, favor with God, favor with man, and physically. I love breaking down those types of stories and how spirituality plays such a huge impact on how you're going to grow. Now, if you're out and, and you're in your world and, and you're looking at all sorts of self-help, self-development, spiritual gurus, all those kinds of things. They have a lot of information to give you. And one of the things that I want to separate myself from is giving you not just to inform you, but I want to inspire you. And when I say inspire, it's essentially saying in spirit. I want to connect in spirit. I want you to see that if your life is going to do and have the freedom and the purpose and the passion and have the abundance and the overflow that you want and you seek, then why would you not want to seek it from the source? And I love that. I love that thought and idea. You know, just knowing that many of you would know that what God is love and what is love and you can go into the scriptures and some of Paul's writings in Corinthians about being patient and kind and never rude or unmannerly. Think about growth in those areas. Think about maybe lack of growth. Think about sometimes in your life if you are frustrated. Let's go into some of these emotions that you get. Maybe guilt, shame, frustration, Envy, strife, bitterness, all of these toxic thoughts, toxic emotions, all of these going to bring you down, going to bring low energy into you, going to keep you literally like weights on you. Have you ever seen in some of those um, CrossFit games, right? You see these big behemoth guys and they're just stacked with weights. They're not running the fastest they've ever ran before when you have that much weight on you. You're not gliding down the freeway with no traffic. Imagine the 405 at 3 in the morning in California. Minimal traffic, unless they have construction. Then there's traffic. But think about that. Just soaring, open freeways, open lanes. Scriptures talk about spiritually that the yoke, the spirit, the yoke that God says, put your yoke, put your burdens on him because he cares for you. Now, why does he care for you? Why does he care about your spirit? Because if you are taking and connecting with God in spirit, you, you are him, are, are one, a child of God, an heir. Think of your body as, as, as what that is, what that is to God, that it's living in you. Your spirit is alive. That's where God wants to be, in a connected spirit, because God is love. And if you're not feeling love, any of those attributes of love, then you're not connecting with God. If you're not connecting with God, the source, the creator, the great I am, then you're going to be playing the game that everybody else is playing. There's no advantage. I think you want an advantage. I think you want to grow. I think you believe that there is something bigger for your life, a calling, something deeper within, just like there was for me. You know, I had those moments where I was frustrated. I was, you know, there, there were seasons where I was with Fortune 500. There were seasons with nonprofits. There were seasons when it was all about what I was doing, my work, my performance. That's who I was. It's called the ego. Unfortunately, that ego never goes away for many. 
They never able to put it down. And the opposite of the ego is what we're talking about right now, is spirit. And that's the first pillar of grow, is the spirit. And that's something that will be centered on and focused on in probably every episode. I will probably talk about how is that connected in spirit. How are you going to take a higher level, higher thinking, you know, some would say higher consciousness, but that's what God asks for us in the scriptures. He says his ways higher than our ways. His thoughts higher than ours. I tell you something, wouldn't you want to be connected to that? So that's why I bring in these types of thoughts and thinking, especially as it comes to God when we grow. The next one's relationships. If you're going to grow, relationships are everywhere, right? God didn't create one man. He created Adam and Eve, created a spouse, created population, created people. Everything is connected even through the people God created. Relationships. Relationships. So we'll talk about that in the areas of growth. What does it look like, I'd say, those of you that are married, what does that look like with your spouse? What do you wish it looked like with your spouse? What is missing? What do you need more of? What do you need less of? Those of you business owners, something that I talk frequently with the mastermind group that I'm in, and it's your spouse. And it's also about who and what is your number one client. Think about that. Who and what is your number one client? What is getting your most attention? If there's, if there's things that are happening at home with your spouse, is your spouse your number one client? If they are or if they're not, how could they be? What would that look like? What would you need to do? Now, many times, high performers, men and women, will give the excuse, well, I'm providing for my family. I'm doing this for this. I'm, I'm doing this for this. And again, I want you to hear, if you were to look outside your body, down on yourself as you were saying these things out of your mouth and watch yourself say that. Because as you say it, I'm doing it for this, I'm doing it for this. The ego creeps up. Ego is all over it. says, why are you doing it for them? Because I want to be a great dad or I want to be a great husband. Well, why do you want to be a great husband? Well, because I want them to have and experience these things. Well, why do you want them to experience and have those things? Why is that important? And many times as you go down deeper and deeper into this iceberg and, and these feelings and these emotions, it gets into things that maybe they never had, things that they want them to do. Maybe it's a look of them. How do they look as a dad or as a spouse? And therefore, they run everything around that, neglecting their spouse, attention, presence, love, care, all of those things. Relationships is growth. If you're not married, maybe it's your work relationships. Maybe it's your friend relationships. Who's in your corner and why? Why are these people taking up your time? Why are you allowing them in your life? Do they fit with the vision you have for your life with the mission? Is it all aligned in these relationships? Are they bringing energy to you? Or are you feeling guilt and shame and envy when you're around them? Maybe it's just a channel of gossip where you just talk about other people. Think about these relationships. If you want them to grow, they've got to be going and moving in the right direction. And that takes an audit. That takes time. That takes awareness of the words that come out of their mouths, of the emotions that they bring to you. How do you feel in their company? How do you feel when you're not in their company? If you are going to grow, 
awareness and belief is going to be at the core of all of these. You have to believe that there is a picture and a person that you are becoming. And that picture has to be crystal clear. When I mentioned vision, that vision, when you can see it, you believe it. But if you can't see it, even in your heart and in your spirit, then it's going to be hard for you to get there. I want you to begin to see where you want to go. Scriptures tell us that faith is the substance of the things that we hope for. It's the evidence of things that we cannot see yet. We cannot see with these eyes, but we can see them in here. We can see them in here. Are your relationships connected or are they taking you away from those things? Be very mindful, guard them, and be careful with them. The third thing is ownership in grow. If you're going to grow, you have to take ownership. If you haven't read Jocko Willink's book, former Navy SEAL, about ownership, it's a great book. It's a challenging book. It's a tough book. It gets in there and it gets on you. But it's not just about taking ownership for your actions, your decisions, your failures, and your success. It's about even your physical body ownership. Now, this can go good or bad for many people. Many will focus so much on owning their body, crafting it to be perfect. But then what happens? They neglect their God, their spirit, and things get out of balance. That's why I want you and I and others to grow from the inside. I want that growth to be coming out in the right way. That's the type of growth we're after. Think about for yourself in ownership. What do you want to grow in physically? What do you want to take ownership of? What do you need to let go of? I was just talking with a friend recently. They were telling me about some of these issues and problems they were having with people. It's not saying there's not problems, but there is a spiritual solution to many of these problems. And there's also a perspective of the problems that you are having. Right? So... Something is not going your way. Well, why, why is that a problem that it's not going your way? What are you learning when it's not going your way? What are you seeing in yourself? What is your spirit trying to teach you in those moments? Right, Taking ownership of those areas just as much <clears throat> excuse me, as you're taking ownership in your body, food and drink consumption, addictive habits and behaviors. Maybe you're covering up. Maybe there's things inside that you're actually not addressing and you need to. But what happens is you just start using behaviors to mask it. Just stay busy or just watch Netflix or go drink, go smoke, go do this. Take pills, feel better, feel good. Maybe there's something deeper in there. And if you're going to grow, we're going to get inside of that physical body. Psalm says you got 70 or 80 years. That's what the scriptures tell us. Scriptures tell us that your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Now imagine if you've ever been to a temple somewhere around the world, and there are some beautiful temples. And that's what I imagine, and I've seen some beautiful temples. That's what God's given you, is a beautiful temple. It's a masterpiece. It's a place where God wants to reside. He wants to be with you and in you. And this physical body, we are a spiritual being in a physical body. That body should reflect, it should emulate It should stir others into love, good works. It should create peace, even in in the places that you go, because your body is a temple. People should come. What What do they do when people go to the temple? They come to a temple, and they come to experience God. Isn't that awesome? Think about what you have the ability and power to do. Think about what God has given to you in your physical body. 
Not for ego, not to say, look at me. Wow, look how powerful I am. Wow, look how beautiful I am. Wow, look at how fit I am. No, 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 no. That we are a reflection of God's glory. That people come to see the temple that he's given to us. Now, what do you want your temple to look like? What do you want people to experience? Can you imagine a beautiful temple with beautiful doors as they walk in and the presence and the feel and the atmosphere if you've ever been into a temple like that? It's, it's awe. It's beauty. It's splendor. It's humbling. Is that what people are feeling in your presence? Do they feel humility? Do they feel God? Do they feel love and patience, perseverance, long-suffering, self-discipline, overflow, abundance, freedom? That's what GROW is going to do. That's why we're here together. Your physical body is a temple, and I love that. The last thing before we go is wisdom. If we're going to GROW, it's our wisdom and it's our mind. Many, for this, this is easy. Many of you have books you read weekly, daily, monthly. Many of you have podcasts that you get into and destroy and understand and share and, and build your mind, your mental capacity. Many of you are taking courses and you're learning or you're getting coaches or you're having counselors or you're doing all of those things and you are getting wisdom. Why is, for, why is wisdom so important? And grow going to grow. Wisdom's important because scriptures tell us that it's the principal thing. It says, search for it as if it were hidden treasure. Now, imagine that. Imagine there's hidden treasure right inside your home. Right inside where you live. Everywhere you go, it talks in Proverbs, it says that wisdom calls from the highest points of the city. It says, come to me. Come and learn. Come, come, come to me. Now the question I have to ask you is, are you listening? Are you looking? Do you want it? Or do you get distracted? Do you get on the grind, on the hustle? Because there's godly wisdom that supersedes any man wisdom. And if I'm going to run in this race, I've I've given this this, experience, uh, demonstration before about the subway and how packed it is in a New York subway in, in the summertime in Manhattan when, when, when it's 5 o'clock and it's sweaty and hot. And that's, that's a subway. That's where people are living. There's a higher place. That's godly wisdom. Instead of traveling by the subway, go through Manhattan with a helicopter. Go to your next destination in a private jet. And what is that? It's wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. Right? What is wisdom? Wisdom is understanding the difference of everything. What is the difference of everything? What is the key points of anything? And as you begin to get wisdom, you're going to grow. You're going to grow, especially in godly wisdom, and then in all the things and knowledge and information that you need to get you to where you you need to go. Books, courses, people you meet, mastermind groups. You're going to be growing from the inside out. And that, to me, is just so powerful. I just love that. I just love that. That's what grow is. That's what you can expect. That's where your life is going to be getting into those calibers and and those places that you can see probably in your heart. Maybe you haven't had somebody talk to you like that. But it's there, and it's real. It's placed there for a reason. And I believe that's my assignment on earth, is talking with people and getting them to be able to take the time and do the work of making that happen. So I want to thank you for taking a few moments and hanging out with me. If you think this is helpful, think it's beneficial for somebody, do me a favor, get a five-star review and send it off. 
Just send it and share it. Say, you know what? I want to grow. Let's be accountable together. Listen to this episode and let's grow together. If you have any questions, drop them below. Find me on Instagram. Go on anthonythompson.org for anything. Join our community on there. If you're looking for a spiritual accountability, come join us. That's one of the most important things. It's going to grow. It's going to boost and blow everything up in the right way, the right time, with the right people. That's what we're going for. Thank you for taking some time with me. And I can't wait to see you and talk to you on the next one. God bless.